Remember the good old days when superhero movies were something special? Well, not anymore. I mean, think about it. You can't go one year without a single comic book related movie being released in theaters. Usually it's the superhero franchises that get rebooted anyway. But out of the barrage of comic book superhero movies, there were some movies that were based off graphic novels. These tend to stand out as well due to their storytelling alone. Some were a hit and others were a miss. But the one that was undoubtedly a hit was the movie 300. While the movie was based off the graphic novel by Frank Miller, 300 was loosely based off the real battle of Thermopylae. But obviously this movie isn't historically accurate. If you want to see a true depiction, watch the 300 Spartans or a History Channel special about it. Okay, enough of the side notes, let's dive into the movie. We follow the story of King Leonidas, played by Gerard Butler, as his kingdom of Sparta is threatened by the conquest of the Persian Empire. But King Leonidas doesn't take this well. This is Sparta! He decides to face off against the Persian army with just 300 of his own soldiers at an epic last stand. 300 is one of those movies where it's CGI heavy, but I don't care if it is. Like Sin City, it adds to the style of it and makes it look like the graphic novel is coming to life. A fun fact about this movie is that the actor who plays Xerxes in this movie is actually only 6 foot 2, but the effects did a great job of making him look 7 feet tall. The few problems I have with 300 is that why don't they have any armor on their torsos? I know they want to show off their masculinity, but I take protection over pride any day. The other thing is the inconsistencies of the Persian army letting the Spartan army have breaks from time to time. Not only was 300 a big hit at the box office, but it's become a hit on the internet. I give 300, 3 stars out of 4. Well, like most hit movies, it was inevitable that they would make another one. Seven years later. The sequel was loosely based off an abandoned graphic novel project that Frank Miller was working on to be a sequel of 300. Warner Brothers asked him if they could make it into a movie, and I guess he was like, sure, whatever. 300 Rise of an Empire is more of a side story than a sequel. It takes place during the events of 300, but it shows the Athenian side of the story as they fight the Persian navy. Their navy is led by the lovely but ruthless Artemisia, played by Eva Green. Unlike 300, where it's very stylized in its violence, 300 Rise of an Empire is very graphic and pours out buckets of blood. The blood being CGI didn't bother me, but why did it get in the lens from time to time? The one person who steals the show is Eva Green's character. She does such a great job as a villain, and she was actually more interesting than Xerxes' character. It does help that she's hot, but I like how this actress is more than just a pretty face. The movie felt a little held back in the action from time to time, but it felt like it gave its all at the climax. Speaking of which, there's a shot in the movie where they show the main character riding his horse during battle, and it's done in one very impressive take. 300 Rise of an Empire should satisfy fans of the first movie and please newcomers. I give 300 Rise of an Empire 3 stars out of 4.